Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. 2022 has come to an end and it's time for the final list you guys. The top 10 best movies in my opinion of course of 2022. What has made it up into the coveted top 10. I have watched 100 movies this year. Marcel the Shell with shoes on was movie number 100. So let's start off with a little disclaimer. As a reminder, this is my own top 10 personal list. If you disagree, that's totally fine. That is a the beauty of film. Here we go. Number 10, Cha Cha Real Smooth. This movie, I literally just watched it the other day and it just quickly bumped number 10 off to number 11. Side note, honorable mentions, I think I'm gonna be doing a TikTok about it um, and or uploading it to my Instagram. Maybe I'll put like a short on here. Cha Cha Real Smooth. Basically we're following like this 22 year old, this kid who's just graduating from, from college and he doesn't really know what to do with his life and ends up being like this DJ for the upcoming Bar Mitzvahs and ends up fancying Dakota Johnson and just kind of tries to you know, befriend her but falls in love with her and it's like this journey of, you know, trying to find yourself and where do you actually fit in life. And I can see people like not really seeing an outcome out of this movie. But again, he's a 22 year old kid. Like, did you really know who you were at 22? It has a lot of laughs and it has a lot of heart in it. And it just snuck right into my number 10. Moving on to number 9 and that is Babylon. This movie just came out like a week or two ago. Unfortunately, it did not do so good in the box office. But this is like another love letter to Hollywood, old Hollywood. We're set in the 1920s, 1930s. At the end of silent film and kind of transitioning into the talkies, we have a great cast. Troy McGuire gives such a like creepy ass performance and this is like a different version of like what's the point of time in Hollywood that came out like in 2019 I think it was. Unfortunately I was not a fan of that movie. I love me Qu some Quentin Tarantino. It is very long you guys. It's a little over three hours long and how these like great stars were great stars as silent film actors but when it came to taking actual direction and having the cue points and having to actually deliver lines guess what their acting career just didn't quite work out the way that they would have wanted it to continue and just like a lot of tragedies that happened. Moving on to my number eight, we have The Northman. Now this one has been on my list since the summer when I did my best movies of the year so far. It did drop down a little bit, but it's still in the top 10. Uh, we have Alexander Skoshkoshkin. You already know I can say his name with all his hotness. He's out for revenge. He will avenge his father. He will save his mother and he will kill his uncle, I forgot his name. And this movie is so, so good. I love the way that it looks. We're like in Viking times, and like I said, revenge. And it might be a little bit too gory because there's a lot of murder. And I like it, the murder, like some shit happens. It's good stuff, y'all, it's good. All right, we're, we're gonna keep moving forward, all right? Oh, I think I have a review on this one. I can't remember, y'all. If I have a review on any of my top tens, I will have them down below. Coming in the seventh place, even though it was higher up earlier in the year, again, it's still in there. I love it so much. I rewatched it. It's still so funny. And that is The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, starring Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal. I freaking love this movie. It's so hilarious. That one scene when they get high on like acid, I think it was, it's just like Nick Cage playing a different version of himself or a version of himself. And then we have this fan, Pedro Pascal, who kind of hires him because you know what? Nick Cage, he the once, you know, 90s, 2000s star that he was, and he's just kind of like a whatever that he's coming to do birthday parties now. And they kind of have this bromance going. What number are we on? I don't even know. Oh yeah, number six. Oh my God, number six, you guys. It should be a surprise that a movie like this, given my favorite movie of all time, it's stop motion. That's gonna be Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I am moving around this chair so damn much. I am sorry. Let me. Too excited, y'all. Too excited. Okay. I never really cared for Pinocchio. He's. I don't really like puppets. They're kind of creepy. Okay. But what Guillermo del Toro did with this character and just made it into something so beautiful, but also has like that hint of darkness in it as the, a Guillermo del Toro movie does. One of the things that I love about stop motion is that every single last detail, somebody has laid hands on that thing. So that should just make it that much more special. That it's not just computer, you know, generated. I love Guillermo del Toro. He's one of my favorite directors working. And because of him, honestly, is why I love cinema so much. Ever since I saw Pan's Labyrinth, which is another one of my favorite movies of all time, 
that's a movie that really got me to like look at film and like really appreciate everything that's involved and for him to make something like this for a character that honestly I didn't care about it really made me fall in love it is so beautiful it is joyful it is sad I kind of almost regret not having it up higher to be honest with you it catch me maybe later next year might be up higher I don't know but this will be the only Pinocchio movie that I would ever recommend to anybody is the only Pinocchio movie that I would ever just rewatch. before I do give you my top five movies let me go ahead and share my sister's list well actually just Desiree's oh well, at this point I don't know I don't think it's gonna give me her list because she's working she got too much going on but I do have Desiree's top 10 list so let me go ahead and share it in case you guys are new and you're wondering like why isn't she here in the video or why am I sharing her her list here uh well you'll see her from time to time if you decide to like stick around and subscribe please subscribe you you normally will see my sisters um doing our after the theater thoughts after whatever movie we just saw uh, so that's when you'll see them so they're like unofficially officially part of the channel so i wanted to you know i'd like to incorporate their list as well so moving on number five that's going to be Ray. Now this was a movie that um, also was in my top 10 earlier in the year. Actually the top three honestly are the same. I didn't know anything about this movie going in. Rewatched it still. Loved it so much. It is the prequel to the Predator movies. So we are doing the Kamachi. Ah uh, I know I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> That's terrible. Don't say shit. Okay. And when the white men are coming, you know, trying to take over the territory and uh, discovering America. So yeah this is during that time. All right. We're following Naru and she's just this young girl who wants to be a warrior and she's great at tracking she's not the greatest hunter but she's a good tracker she's trying to prove herself for this tribe that she can be more than just the woman going over there and picking up you know vegetation and so that she can do more she can bring more to the table and she knows that there's something lurking in the woods and she's going to try to figure out what this is. Little does she know that it's all out of this world. And she's over there. She's kicking ass. There's a dog. Let me let y'all know right now. The dog lives. That's all we're going to say. We, we don't care about everybody else. We care about the dog. And it lives. Oh, y'all. Yeah, number four. I had no idea about this movie, guys. It's great, though. It's great because if you think about it, the, the movies that I really went in with, like, no expectation, no nothing, are the movies that, I, that really surprised me and, like, wow like wow okay that's gonna be the mini there's some crazy stuff happening there we have annotator joy again i love me some annotator joy we have ray fines Ooh, we're following that like this group of like self-entitled people that get invited to this very prestige very elegant dinner and everything that gets presented to you is done so beautiful the food looks great and everything that's behind the food like the story when they're presenting the food rather if i can get my thoughts together because it's like moving so quickly it's not necessarily what i thought it was gonna be i mean i don't really know what i thought it was gonna be but it wasn't this all right before we do get to my top three if you haven't already please give this video a like subscribe to the channel don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time i post something new also i have been uploading a couple more videos on tiktok and uh, like if you're curious to know what my worst movies of 2022 are you can check them out there it's 25 i don't normally do like worst of the year but i was like let me do something new and something different and we'll just do it here on tiktok so moving on and number three is going to be the batman this movie i saw twice in theaters yeah, I'm not somebody to go to the theater like multiple times. The last movie that I saw twice was Spider-Man Far From Home and prior to that was A Star Is Born. I saw that movie three times. That was the most I've seen. I just loved how dark and like grimy and they gave me all the Gotham vibes that I love that I want from a Batman movie. I used to watch uh, Gotham the show and this kind of gave updated a level of darkness and and feels to it compared to other batman movies so that i haven't really enjoyed i really like this one i think robert patterson did amazing as batman as vengeance he's not quite the playboy that is bruce wayne that we know of course but i feel like in this time that he's in his life he's more like er and like emo rather than like playboy maybe if we see him again he'll be more playboyish more like put together more bruce wayne but he definitely nailed batman and like everybody who was out there like 
saying, oh, hell no, not Edward Cullen. Y'all, how many years ago was that? Y'all need to get that shit out of your mind. I love me some Twilight, but like, come on. They've done so many things, so many other great <laughs> movies. Villains, we had three. I think it was three of them. Paul Dano as Riddler, Colin Farrell as Penguin. He was very unrecognizable as Penguin. He did great. John Tuturo? I don't know. Y'all yeah, already know I'm terrible. And he was Falcone. And of course, we have Zoe Kravitz as Celine. We have Jeffrey Wright as James Gordon. Andy Serkis as Alfred. Um, I don't know. I was a little bit disappointed. That's probably the most disappointed I, I, I was because I wish we had more of him involved. Um, and I feel like if he was a waste in it. That's probably my only dislike. And that's kind of sad that I'm going there. Like, I didn't say dislikes about anything else. But I feel like whenever I talk about the Batman, I never actually mention that. So that was, that was my opportunity to say that. Paul Dano as a Riddler, y'all. Ooh, he did so good. But Paul Dano has been really good because he was also in The Fable Man's. And he was really good at in, in that movie as well. And of course, uh, Colin Farrell was also in the uh, Banshees, Banshees of Inish... Inish, 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 Inish? That movie? Oh, that was really good too. I just overall enjoyed that we are following Batman as being a detective. He's literally trying to solve a crime. And then, yeah, that car scene. Ooh, I love that. We got the Batmobile, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Moving on to my number two. And this is a, another movie that really surprised me. I honestly didn't go in with like a lot of high hopes because I just saw the first part right before I saw the second one. Some of you are probably like, okay, that's one of two movies. And let me just say, it's not Avatar. I mean, I've seen the first part, but I just, I wasn't a fan of Avatar, so I had no intention of seeing the second part. Maybe later on, I'll see the second part at some point, but like, not right now. Ooh, I think that may have just put me into the danger zone. That's right, Tom Gunn and Maverick. Wow, 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 that movie was Wow. And again, it's another movie. I'll rewatch. Y'all yeah, know I had to rewatch the movies just to make sure that like, they need to be on my list. Make sure they need a chef. And I said, no, Mr. Top Gun. You're still my number two. It's such a great summer movie. I loved it. Definitely for me, surpassed the first part. Well, it's a because I, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> so, but still, the fact that I was able to enjoy this movie as much as I did, as surprising as it was. Having no love for the original and literally just see, just saw it. Tom Cruise, amazing. Miles Teller, amazing. And a lot of this stuff, of course, is like practical effects. You know, Tom Cruise didn't want like a lot of that CGI shit going around. He learned how to fly a freaking like pilot or how to pilot a plane. I mean, we, you know, he knows how to do the helicopter if I knew how to go stuff the helicopter one danger zone some of your are probably like well it's probably just the shirtless hot guys no it's the story there's so much fun there's the emotion there's heart to it the hot shirtless guys are just a plus but moving on to my number one and that is one very strange very fun very again I no expectations like I went in there pretty much blind it came out and I was just like whoosh. and this is how you do a freaking multiverse and that is not Doctor Strange into the multiverse this is everything everywhere all at once wow this movie wow you guys if you have not seen this movie I highly 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 recommend I mean obviously it's my favorite movie of the year it's been my favorite movie of the year since I did this movie this movie this video in the summertime it is so fun it is strange. We're in a multiverse. There's like comedy in there. There's weirdness. There's fashion. Wow. There's like great fashion. Like whether it's like, you know, like costume changes and or makeup. Great like action, like fight scenes and stuff. I mean, mind you, there's like so weird like hot dog finger stuff. It's fine. That's probably like my least favorite. There we go. We're gonna talk negative about this too. The hot dog fingers. That was kind of weird. Heart. Did I see heart? It has heart. Again. We're keeping it vague. We're not really saying much, but just know there is a pantless man in the middle of a fight trying to jump on top of the trophy. Yeah, I just don't know what's going on behind it because you need to watch it because you don't know what it, what's going on. Michelle Yu, Young, I don't know how to say their names. I'm terrible with names. Jamie Lee Curtis, love her. Love it. Oh my gosh, you guys. There has to be, there's like going to be nominations for this movie. Like I said earlier, this is how you do a multiverse. If you're sick and tired of superhero movies, this one right here. Oh my god, yeah, I only had one super movie. Super movie. Superhero movie this year. Look at that. I think last year I had like two. One. And it was a DC movie, though. It was a DC movie. And it wasn't no Marvel. I, I said, no. I don't want you. I don't want you today. This is it. This is, the, these are my top 10 best movies, in my opinion. 
I don't think I said that right. My neck is trying to attack me. Let me know down below what your list looks like. If you don't want to give me the top 10, give me top 5. Your favorite one. You agree? You disagree? That's totally fine, y'all. Yeah, totally okay. It's been a fun year. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you to, we had a lot of new subscribers. Thank you so much. Hopefully you stick around. Got some new stuff coming in 2023. Later on, because like I said, I'm going to be taking a little, a little break here at the beginning of the year. I mean, I'm still going to be uploading a couple things. But yeah, that's it for me today. Thank you so much. Until next time, I'll see you guys at concession. Happy New Year.